This $8.55 bag of plastic is the reason I abandoned my Subaru Ambassadorship. For those of you that have been following me for a while, you may recall that a little over a year ago I was named a Subaru Ambassador, which at the time I thought was pretty cool. But shortly after that, and thanks to an experience at a Subaru dealership, I quickly abandoned that Ambassadorship and haven't looked back. Let me explain, and then you can decide for yourself whether or not I was being a Karen. Back in the fall of 2019, my wife was looking for a new car to replace her aging 2006 Honda Civic. And so we went out to different dealerships, Honda, Toyota, Nissan, Ford, Hyundai, and then finally Subaru. And while at the Subaru dealership, she fell in love with the Crosstrek. And I won't lie, I, at the time I was driving a 2006 uh, Ford F-150, also showing its age. And while I was waiting for her to close the deal, I started shopping around and I fell in love with the Crosstrek. So in October of 2019, my wife and I purchased two brand new 2019 Crosstreks and drove off the floor same day. Now fast forward to January of 2022 and my wife was looking for something a little bigger. Save the jokes, I know that one kind of writes itself, but spare me. So with her heart set on a new Outback, back to the same dealership we went. Salesman was a salesman, fairly nice guy, and we got a decent deal for the Crosstrek as a trade-in. And again, same day, we left the floor with a brand new 2022 Subaru Outback. She was of course ecstatic to have a brand new car with all the features that she wanted and more bells and whistles than you can shake a stick at. But here's where things start to go to shit. After about two weeks, we get a call from the dealer saying, hey, we gave you the wrong car. What? Now, apparently two brand new Outbacks of the same color and relatively same configuration were ordered and delivered that day. One was supposed to be a dealer loaner and the other one was for my wife. They gave her what was supposed to be the dealer loaner. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of how dealerships work, but I was wondering why not just swap the damn VINs on the paperwork so that she got the one that she ended up with and they kept the one that they accidentally got as a loaner. But no, we had to go back. She had to sit and wait and do brand new paperwork to swap over uh, to get the one that had been a dealer loaner for two weeks, which also pissed me off because we all know people don't take care of dealer loaners and she gave them back the other car. Now, of course, me being me, I'm like, okay, go in there, but you better make damn sure that that car is in pristine shape. It does not have more miles than the one that you're trading back in, et cetera, et cetera. So she comes back and I'm like, hey, did you make sure that the one that you have now has all the same features as the one that you traded in? Because that's what you paid for. And she had thought so. But then the next night she's like, hey, where's the, the little cargo net in the back? Um, does that pop up somehow? I go out and take a look and uh, the damn thing's missing. So she calls the dealership, they say, oops, my bad, right, we're going to get that installed for you right away, just come back in. She drives it again after work, and they install it, and they come back, and then fast forward yet another couple of weeks, she's like, hey, the, the net won't stay up, how come the thing won't uh, secure? I go out and investigate, and I see this. The net is there, but there's nothing for the little hooks to latch onto. She had been latching it onto these little drop-down hooks that are for God knows what. And I'm thinking to myself, that can't be right. I look online and sure enough, there's supposed to be a couple little anchor bolts up there to which the net secures. She contacts the salesperson again and says, hey, we're missing some parts. This net isn't installed completely. I, I describe and tell her what should be there and even download from Subaru this spec sheet that says, here's all the parts that's supposed to come with this particular accessory. So she can go back to the dealer. She went to the salesman and said, hey, it's still missing parts. Can you take care of this, please? And for the next six months, she's exchanging texts with this sales guy trying to get this resolved to no end. Here's an example of the exchange. Hey Peter, I was hoping the last time I texted you would be the last time I texted. It looks like I'm missing parts from my cargo net in the trunk. And she even shares the plans with him on what parts are supposed to be there that I had shared with her. Radio silence. She follows up again. Hi Peter, just checking to see if you saw my last text. And he responds, yep, got you pinned to the top of my messenger app. Don't want to forget, having trouble finding why we had... Why one had obvious mounts and yours doesn't. Parts getting back to me. Thanks. Now, this should not be a huge mystery. It doesn't matter why it's not there. Here's the parts that are supposed to be there. They're not there. Put them there. Radio silence for a bit before he sends back another message. Can you send another picture of the back of your trunk and the way you're using, it net, the, using the net right now? No rush at your convenience. And she sends the picture and again, it's hooked up on those little hooks that you're not supposed to be hooking that net to. Another week and a half of radio silence. Hi, Peter. Have the parts come in yet? Two more weeks. Hi, is there any progress in getting the correct parts for my cargo net? At one point, I texted him like, Hey, dude, I sent you the diagram. These are the parts you need. You should be able to order the kit, if not the parts by themselves. Just get them installed. I can imagine what happened. They probably had some poor porter throw in this net and not really know what he or she was doing. 
In the meantime, I'm getting emails from Subaru of America, their ambassador program, saying, hey, you know, make sure you're doing this, make sure you're promoting that and whatnot, you know, the things that come with an ambassadorship in order to continue earning your points so you can qualify to remain an ambassador. You're supposed to have certain types of activity. And as I'm seeing this and going through this ordeal, I'm thinking to myself, ain't no way in hell I'm going to recommend going to a Subaru dealer if this is how an ambassador is supposed to be treated. I know that sounds kind of high and mighty, but for real, right? If it were your brand and your name online, would you suggest, would you advocate for this type of treatment to a friend, let alone a stranger? I sure as hell not. So I somewhat maliciously let my ambassadorship expire thinking, I'm done. A year and a half later, I happened to be at the dealer picking up some parts for my Subaru, and I'm shooting the shit with the parts guy, cool kid. And this whole ordeal suddenly came back to me and I'm like, hey dude, here's what's going on. Let me know if you can help me out. And I explained the situation to him. And he's like, oh yeah, we should have those parts. Took him about three minutes to find this bag of parts on, to order for me. Uh, it's two studs and the instructions, the template that I had found online, he gave to me, $8.55 that he comped as an, uh, as an apology for the whole ordeal. So now all I have to do is drill two holes and put these suckers in. This kid and like most parts personnel in my experience have a brain. They know what they're doing. They're very friendly. They like working on cars. They like helping people out. Unlike the salespeople in my experience at this dealership who are very kind to you until you make the transaction and then it's a big fuck you and you're out of there. So having had that experience is why I abandoned my Subaru ambassadorship. Having purchased three brand new cars in just as many years from a single dealer, you'd think we'd have a little bit of street cred with them or maybe a little bit of preferential treatment. If not, they also knew that I was a Subaru ambassador and we still got hosed trying to find these parts for my wife's car after she received a loaner um, in lieu of her brand new car because they had botched up the paperwork. What do you think? Am I being too petty? Am I being a Karen here? To me, this just didn't seem like the type of business that I would recommend to others. While you mull that over, let's go ahead and get these damn things installed. Too shallow for a step bit, gonna need to get a regular half inch. And there you have it. Subaru, I still love your cars, very happy with ours. Your parts guys that I dealt with was fantastic, but your salespeople and general service for customers as far as getting the right shit in their cars, it's pretty deplorable. Please work on that. Until the next time, this is Tom the Dilettante. Look forward to your comments to let me know whether or not I was overreacting or if you would have done the same thing. Hell, what would you have done differently? You all take care of yourself and I will see you on the next one. Take care.